Does it take a lot of courage to talk about this stuff? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm burning down all of the bridges. I wouldn't... Oh, my God. I think I've thought about it so much, and I've been so calm for so long. The fact that I'm actually talking about this, and it's real, because I'm burning down all the bridges. Everyone's going to see it. Everyone's going to see it. How old are you now? I am 18 years old. 18. Yes. And you grew up in? Uh... In Comstock Park, Michigan, but I went to school in Sparta High School. Very interesting little school. Everyone's kind of the same. So you're a Michigander? Yes, and I didn't know I looked like a Michigander, but then I realized Michiganders have a look, and I have a lot of flannel, so. I, I'm a Michigander. I, I, I was born in Detroit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I remember hearing I, that. I lived in Detroit, Detroit until I was, like, around 10. See, I, I grew up in the very Grand Rapids, which is near it. So that's our city, and so it's like the mellowed out version. So I don't, Detroit's interesting. What are we going to talk about? What do you want to talk about? I, so I do escorting, and see, this is the thing. I wrote so much down, and it's such an important story to share. I feel like I could really help a lot of people uh, recognize abuse because I'm pretty sure my dad is a sociopath and my mother is a narcissist and everyone thought our lives were perfect. Like, you know how they just display it on Facebook and everyone doesn't actually talk to each other in person or have connections. You're just all sitting there judging. And I was painted out to be this person, this crazy like just wild child that, you know, couldn't be tamed and yada, yada, yada. But like, how does a kid get to that? And I, I think it's really frustrating because I have a TikTok where I talk a lot about mental issues and stuff. And all the adults just sit there and judge me and think like, oh, like there she's going again and blah, blah, blah. And my mom painted me out to be this awful person, but I don't think they really knew what was going on behind the scenes. And that's how I feel about that. What kind of family was it? Were you guys religious? Yes, 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 yes. I have such a huge problem with the church. I feel as if it's, how did the church come from the Bible? Like, I'm sorry, I, <laughs> you read the Bible and then you see the church and you're like, Great. it makes sense why Jesus hated the church, which I'm not saying like, I what I believe in everything, because I don't know if I believe in anything, but I also believe in everything. But yeah, the church, it I feel like it was created by men and it portrays this thing where people become perfect people for naive victims. You're born thinking you are a shameful person. You deserve nothing just because you exist. And there is a wrathful God out there who's also a loving God who, if you mess up once, if you do one wrong thing, think one wrong thought, oopsie. I, th I think it's funny how religious people that I've met are so terrified to die. Why are you so scared to die then? Because d every single day, every single thought, you're thinking, if I mess up, w w what, if I'm, what if I'm a goner? And I believed in it for so long. And when I started questioning things and asking questions and realizing that they just care more about shutting up. I think a lot of people hide behind religion. Uh, yeah, I think I think maybe religion was kind of used as a weapon against me. Uh, when I was, uh, my first memory is being in the woods with my brother. And he was telling me like to be quiet and to like, shh. And you know, if the car's coming, pull your shirt down and so my first memories were sexual. Um, and I'm not saying anything against my brother. I love my brother so much because he was a victim too. And I found out things later that a lot of things happened to him. And unfortunately for men, uh, if something like that happens, you're told to shut up, be a man. Like you, you should be lucky. Like, <laughs> ugh. But there's, I come from a very long line of pedophilia and uh, women who are very taught to respect the man, follow the man, like 
my mom can't speak up for herself to my brothers. And I remember so many times in my childhood, my oldest brother, he, he hated me just because I was born a girl. And he even told that, that's like a known fact in our family that we always used to joke about. Um, he would just start screaming at me. He has this anger, I think everyone in my family does, uh, because you're pretending to be perfect so much. We didn't, we don't have a connection. We don't have, we don't know anything about each other because we're all so living in fear, I think. We just exist together. And one wrong crack, something blows. So my, I remember we used to have chore sheets. I was the only one who really had to do the chores, which if I didn't do it, I would get in a lot of trouble. But my brothers could just slack off and it was fine. And I was like, okay. Which they did mow the lawn, so you know, that's everything. But we basically, my, my mom just lets the boys walk all over her. Like they throw their clothes all over in the laundry. They will yell at her and slam doors if she says anything. But if I were to do that, oh no, oh no. So I think I went through life having a very different experience. What was your relationship like with your dad? Mm. I saw my dad as the most incredible person in the world. I thought he was everything. I, I, loved, I loved my dad so much, and I hate that I still love my dad. Uh, he, I remember he took me to a daughter dad dance once, and he wasn't on his phone at all. He just danced with me and told me how beautiful I was, but uh, he only cares about women for sex. And he would talk a lot in front of my mom, like at the dinner table about all, like a bunch of different girls and all the young girls and hot girls and yada, 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 made her feel like crap when she got older and gained weight. And uh, when I started getting older, I started to gain a little weight and he would shove food in my face and be like, like you pig, blah, blah, blah. Like you're, you're like no guy like is gonna love you if you're not pretty. Like everyone thinks looks are the most important thing. No, women, your value, I don't give a crap what that psychologist was saying. Like that's not love. That is not love and looks fade and it's okay. Your value doesn't decrease the second, you're, you're saying we're most valuable at 18? That's, why is that? That's so frustrating. I hate those standards. Like, it's so frustrating being a girl and it's so frustrating being a man too, I know. You guys aren't allowed to show emotion. You guys have to have all this weight and responsibilities. It feels like it's always on you. Uh, you know, I think women and men should be held accountable. Like, uh, you know, a lot of women, they don't solely go throughout their lives craving a male's love, a male's, but it, it, you can't work like that. When you put out that energy, you're getting the wrong type of man back. You have to know yourself and just be okay with living. There's so much more than romantic love. I promise, I, I promise. Like find passions, find beauty. And when you expand yourself, then you will find like naturally when you least expect it, I swear, when you least expect it, some guy just floats into your life who's like, I like her. I like what she's doing. I think she's beautiful just the way she is. I don't care about the other women. I just want her. And I know, I know love fades and yada, yada, yada. But, you know, maybe we have more than one soulmate. Maybe, you know, people just come into our lives when we need them and they float away when we've grown out of each other. And I don't, I don't like the idea of playing all these games for to, to, to date someone, no. No, that's not, that's so superficial. That's so shallow. Just be yourself, man. Just be yourself. <sighs> yeah, so my dad, uh, but as I got older and I hit puberty, he started acting really differently. And my mom knows that. She literally, her therapist even, they talked about it. And then my mom told me how her therapist literally pointed it out. But instead of caring, instead of, seemingly being sympathetic. It was more of, she looked at me like she was almost jealous. It, she, ah, uh, yeah. And uh, I remember 
Of the, of the attention you were getting? Yeah, yeah, because he didn't, I don't think he like really saw her in that way anymore. And my mom loves my dad. I will give her that. That is one thing I will give her. She is the most loyal person ever. And I don't think she'll ever marry again. I don't think she'll ever, like they were high school sweethearts because in the church, you know, you're raised, you have to remain abstinent until you're married, which I think is very dangerous because, um, you can't, marriage is so dangerous. Are your parents still together? No, my dad lives in the Philippines. He, we, she ended up getting, uh, we adopted a girl when she was 17 who comes from a bad past. Not my story to share, uh, but he would take pictures of her while she was sleeping. My mom used her as like a therapist, which you should not be placing on a 17 year old girl. That's wrong, that's wrong. She, she was literally bleeding on our couch one time and none of my parents did anything, but my dad ended up writing her a love letter saying about he basically can't control his cravings. He just, he can't keep it in his pants. Like it's so hard. It's so hard to just not do that. I have seen men be abstinent. It's possible. <laughs> That's a fucking lie. The porn industry, it messes with you. And so eventually, cause I had reported my brother years later in fifth grade and because that was a continuous thing, which where was my mom? She was literally a stay at home mom, but she was never there. She was never there. And yeah, so they, they came that night. I accidentally reported my brother, which I ended up getting blamed for. I got blamed for. They babied him. They gave him princess treatment. But me, why would you ruin his life? Why would you destroy our family like that? Oh my God, like uh, Bethany. He can't go to the military now. Oh my God, you destroy everything, Bethany. You're such a hurricane. Like, you are just nothing. Shut up, just shut up already. No one wants to hear you. No one cares, just shut up. And yeah, I, I actually blamed myself. Like, I felt so bad and I, I didn't mean to ruin his life. I, I love my brother. I don't want him in my life ever again. I don't want any of my family in my life ever again. That's why I'm okay with doing this now because I've accepted they are who they are, and I just, I don't wanna see anyone from that town ever again. Like, I'm not saying everyone was bad, there were some really great people, but as a whole, what was the question again? <laughs> How, what was your relationship like with your dad? Oh, wow, that was like, the first that was my, <laughs> see, ADD that was, brain, you get sidetracked. Like, <laughs> so, so you ended up in sex work, how did that happen? Yeah, so, I have a TikTok where I talk about some of the things. And when my mom found out, oh, oh my gosh, I destroyed, I put a crack in her perfect little world she wanted to portray. And my family, like my extended family, we all live in the same area. We never see each other. We never see each other. I can count like how many times I've seen them on two hands, but they're all Facebook bestie boo bears and they sent it to my mom and she freaked out because I was, I was, I was drinking, uh, not often back then, not often. And I was, they, they never knew, like I did a lot of, I did a lot of drugs uh, when in high school. Like I was, but I was really just trying to figure it out. I was tripping a lot. And I, my best friend, she, she was a pretty heavy alcoholic and I knew she got into some very dangerous situations. Kid, parents, you don't know what your kids are. Like, it's dangerous out there. Like there are grown men who, who know that there are drunk high schoolers all over and the stuff you hear is just, the things that she's been through, it's an abomination. And so I would go out with her sometimes just so I knew that there was one person out there who had good intent. So yeah, like I would, I'd sneak out a lot uh, in middle school. Like I'd just leave and no one would know. <laughs> like I, and I lived a double life. Like on one side I was pretending to be this perfect person, but I had a lot of, a lot of problems <laughs> that they never even noticed. I was bulimic for a while. Um, but anyways, yeah, so she found the alcohol and that was a huge no-no. No drinking in the house, which I would rather, oh yeah, because my best friend, she, I want her to be safe, so I made her drink in my home one time because it was better than her going out. 
And so I forced her to stay in the room. <laughs> and she found the alcohol bottles and no drinking in our house, no drinking in the house. And she found my TikTok. She was, so one day when I was getting out of work, right after I turned 18, like six days after, I think she was waiting for me to turn 18. Like she, I walk up to the car and I can just sense the energy's off and I'm just like, oh. And I see a little contract, a little contract that she typed out, sitting right there. And she's like, if you wanna live here, like on the contract it said, you are not allowed to bring spirits and demonic things into our house. And you must delete your TikTok and apologize. And right then, I knew my life could go two ways. I could keep being where I always been, completely shamed, miserable, small, religious, maybe go to college, even though I don't know how I would have paid for it, but. Uh. So yeah, I ended up just feeling this wave of relief because it wasn't even a choice to me. I was like, I would rather just jump into the unknown, completely naive to the world, no experience, because I was super isolated. And, like people talk to me about some things and I'm always like, huh, huh? And they're like, how do you not know that? How do you not know that? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, so I lived on my sister's couch for a while in a one bedroom apartment with four animals. And me and my sister had a very rocky relationship at the time because there was a lot of, if you've ever adopted a 17 year old girl, you, you, you probably may have a slight idea, which I, I love my sister and I'm so grateful for her and I'm so grateful she came into our lives and she did not destroy our family even though my parents made it seem like she did. No, she just exposed the problems that were always there. That's all. And she's not crazy. Those are just symptoms of trauma. Like, she's an incredible person. Seriously, great heart. But I, I couldn't live there anymore. Like I was suffocating. And I was working fast food because, you know, me, I was like, this school system sucks. Screw you guys, and I'm out. Uh, even though if I I applied myself, like I'd do really good, and my teachers would always be like, I knew they looked at me like wasted potential. So I was working at Sonic, fast food place, and wasn't making enough, working 12 hour shifts, we're getting $12 an hour. So I signed up for a sugar daddy website. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my, one of the negative experiences from that Sugar Daddy website is I was talking to this guy and I, I kind of, at first I was naive and didn't think sex had anything to do with it. You dumb girl. <laughs> uh, and I was talking to this one guy. There were so many red flags. He asked me to meet him in a Walmart parking lot. Oh my God, like what? And so I met him in the Walmart parking lot. And at this point, like I was still very scared of sex. Like I, I still have a problem with people touching me. And even if I like someone, like I have to be drunk <laughs> and I hate that. I want to just be able to love someone, but he, uh, I was shaking the whole time and he knew that. He was old too. He was like probably like early 60s. And which age is a matter of perspective, I suppose. So, and you know, we ended up having sexual intercourse. And so he drove me back, but he didn't drive me all the way back. He just drove me a little bit down the hill and he practically threw me out of his car, threw a $20 bill at me and said, go buy yourself lunch, sweetie. That hurts. Oh, that hurts so bad. And so, but I was determined because everyone thinks being beautiful is so freaking great. <laughs> like I, growing up, like I always knew guys would give me this look, they'd get this look in their eye. And you know, I've been, I was kind of obsessed with porn growing up and sex was all around me all the time. And so I always knew what they were thinking. Uh, I don't even know where I was going with this. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was the question? We, we were talking about how, how you get into yeah, se yeah, sex yeah, work. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, so, but, so I was determined. And I, you know, I saw this as an opportunity for me to conquer my fears because 
if, if my looks are so great, it's about freaking time they do something good for me and make me some money. <laughs> like, I do something good. Like, it, the, the looks are so super shallow. You can't exist. Ah, I'm not gonna get into it. I'm not gonna get into it. Calm yourself, Bethany. I actually, I have, calm yourself. So I ended up meeting up with some more people. I ended up finding a guy for 600 a night. And it was incredible. Like, I remember the first time I was like, holy fucking shit. Like, I just stared at it and I was like, dude, that's a week's, over a week's worth of pay. And I just, I I didn't, I don't, I still don't enjoy doing that. I do see sex as not sacred, I'd say, but it, like it's an energy exchange. And I just want to at least know that that person respects me a little bit, likes me a little bit, instead of seeing me like complete trash. Uh, and then I found a, a, one time I was going out on a, one of the guys that I was meeting up with who he gave me $1,000 a night. So, hmm, pussy magic. Anyways, sorry, I'm so sorry, Mark. <laughs> um, I, the Uber driver, he ended up finding, like we exchanged Instagrams and he ended up finding my number through some person that we had mutual connections with. And she ended up being like, oh, like you should text this person. So we went out on, he took me out to dinner and told me he knew a girl and he told her about me and she ran a massage parlor. Uh, so I went in for an interview. I got the job, put in my two weeks at Sonic. I had no idea what I was getting into. I did, but I didn't. And I, I know people have like a huge uh, stigma, I guess this is a good word for it, about female sex workers and our relationships with each other, but the girls there, they're people, man. And they were so kind to me. They, they just, they, di they didn't judge me. They just, they got it. Life's a bitch. I love life and it, life can be so beautiful, but it, to experience the beautiful, you gotta go through the bitch first. So, they, I, I would have mentally drowned without them. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, so I would give people a little massage, which I got pretty good at giving massages. And you know, I, I learned so much about men, so much, and I can look a man in the eyes now. And I'm not afraid of sex to that degree anymore. Like I used to be just, if anything was touching me, all these PTSD flashbacks that I still don't really fully remember and I just like hyperventilating panic attacks. Like I used to like knee guys in the balls, like if they even like got close and I couldn't, like I, I had like a, some guys who were actually decent people in high school and I just, I was me. And so, uh, but you know, there's some really awful people that go to the massage parlors, but there are actually people who makes sense because you never know someone's story or why they're doing what they're doing. I knew that I wasn't just some, what people expect the natural, like when you think of horror, it's probably not a great thing. So I knew I was more than that. I knew I was worth more than that. I know I deserve better than that. I knew I wasn't gonna be there forever. I, I just, I know my situation and you know, give, I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about me. Like, and there were some guys there who, they, they treated me like a real person and they, one of the guy, his wife had passed and he, he can't bring himself to be with an art girl. But, you know, I, I understand the fact that sometimes you just, you just need a little, but some guys went there for the intimacy of a woman. Cause there's something a woman can offer that I think men have but they kind of need that reflection reflected back into them to be like, it's okay, it's safe. Talk to me about your feelings. I care about your feelings. And yeah, he, like, I remember him crying to me one time and he was like, I wanted it to be me. I wanted it to be me who died first so badly. And I think he just kind of saw me and her a little bit. And, you know, I was so angry at men for a long time, but, 
it's societal conditioning and I don't think women should be saying hate all men. I think that's disgusting. I think that's part of the problem. I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it at all. Um, yeah, and I and then I ended up so the manager and I, we actually did not get along though. We are it's, it's okay. You know, sometimes you have personalities with people that just don't work well. And that me and her Two personalities that did not work well. <laughs> and she would always accuse me of doing these things and be like, I have proof of it on cameras. I saw you on the camera doing it. And I'm like, I would show her physical evidence of how that was a complete lie. And one day she's like, you know what? I'm so sick of you. Just get out, just get out. And I realized I can't do it anymore. I, I can't do this anymore. And I can't, I deserve better than this, yeah. Fine, I'll go. And because it was destroying me. And one of my clients, I guess you should say, he even looked at me one day and he's like, Bethany, you've got too big of a heart for this. You can't do this. And it's true because even at my lowest, even though a lot of those guys I meant absolutely nothing to, I still, I hate myself for saying this. I still cared about every single one of them. I still treated them with so much respect, even though like, you're coming to a horror house, buddy. How desperate are you? <laughs> and I, humans are human. <sighs> and so now I, I also found some really good guys off the, the Sugar Daddy website because you either strike out really hard and you get tossed out of a van and thrown a $20 bill, or you meet someone who has a bit of a screwed up past just like you and can't really do normal relationships because normal people are so confusing like <laughs> it's hard being around normal people and so sometimes you meet someone who's just really incredible and yeah so I will I have like a select few people who I actually just like being around. I like being around them. They make me feel good about myself. They are respectful towards me and I am respectful towards them. And we have a good time together when we were together and I, I genuinely appreciate them as people. Like I, I literally just met the most incredible person. I can't even explain it to you guys. He's got such a good heart, such a good heart and such a story. So he actually encouraged me to do this too. He, he, he was like, he, I, cause I was like, I don't know. I'm used to everyone judging me all the time. So like, he just like looked at me and he was like, why do you think I'm judging you so much? And he, he's like, you are so brave. Like you, you're 18 and you're doing this because you want to help other people. Like you, you're putting yourself in a vulnerable place, in a vulnerable position, talking about really hard things and you want to make a difference. You, you want to make a difference. When I was 18, I was doing the most stupid things. And I do stupid things. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. So, it, and it's nice because I like, never really had someone believe in me. So, it's nice to just have someone who believes in you. Uh, but this isn't, and I can't handle a normal job right now. Like, I, I know that sounds, oh, she's so lazy. She's doing nothing with her life. I, I applied to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which I have an audition soon. I have been applying to agencies. And I'm, in a, I'm in another school program right now, and I have I actually got invited through, like, I'm not gonna explain the whole logistics of it, but there's a program and then you audition more and then you get selected for another program and eventually you weem yourself away because they're looking for people who may have potential. And I actually got in. So I have this uh, trip I'm going to in July and I'm meeting with a bunch of agencies from all over who are scouting people out. And I'm really excited about it. And we have classes leading up to the point. So I've been, which I really like because you just write essays and I love writing. Mark knows that, Mark knows that. He saw my notebook, like I, I'm writing all the time. I, I can't stop writing, but I also, jobs are so draining for me. Like. 
I don't think I was meant for a normal job. <laughs> I don't, and I, I'm trying so hard to work on myself and to just be present and have, dream big, like just dream big. I don't know. You never know what's out there and there's, there's really beautiful things out there. Like life doesn't have to be one way. It really doesn't, um, you know. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you've done. Like, you know, every day is a new day and every day is a new you and I keep exploring new parts of myself. I never thought I would be here. Trust me. I, I never thought I'd be the person on the screen. I was the person who watched people on the screens. And now here I am, so. Let me ask you a question. What, what is the hardest part of being an 18 year old female for you? Um. I think it's just very lonely. It's it's very lonely. Um, you know, I saw one girl say, she was like, pretty girls especially, they can't ever just be neutral. You walk by and everyone has an opinion. They either go, oh, I don't like this girl just because of X, Y, Z, which is, it's insecurities projected and I don't hold them accountable to that. Well, I mean, I, I, I it's fine, but then, or they, you have to earn, you have to like prove that you're not a piece of, like you're not a mean girl. And then with guys, you know, obviously it is kind of hard for people to normally look past the porn video. It's like, you just, I feel like I'm walking and everyone's just picturing me naked, but I love how I look naked and I'm okay with how I look naked. So, you know what, it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a lot of girls, and it's very. So, so you did, you did some porn as well? No, no, no. What, what are you What are you saying about porn though? Oh, uh, because like sometimes I feel like guys just see girls as porn, like like they don't really see them as a human being. It's just. You guys get you, you, females get objectified. Everyone knows that. No, like, I know. It, I know. If but... you don't like, oh, buddy, but. It's been a long time since I was your age, so. Oh yeah, know. it's different now too. It's very like, different it's, now. It's because it's all around you. You know, you're giving these children internet, and everywhere you see, you're seeing girls in bikinis and uh, with OnlyFans is so common. Which I'm, I'm not, I am not judging you if you have an OnlyFans, but you know, like it's so easy to access. It's just, and then guys have like the culture of you know, oh, like get pussy, like pull this, pull that. And it's kind of like a rat race and everyone's competing with each other. I think I think porn really hurts men. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I really do. I think it hurts women. I think it hurts men. I think it- Yeah, it's bad for everybody. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Be, because it hurts men, it ends up hurting women. women yeah, too. yeah. And I think women need to, we'll sacrifice another woman for a man's approval. That's something that's hard about being a, a young girl. People will, a lot of women will thoughtfully destroy my character in front of a man to make them feel better because they're just, they're insecure. And I think it's sad that we have a world where you can't just appreciate yourself. I didn't realize it at the time, but when I left the massage parlor, when I got fired, it was actually the best day of my life because the thing about that type of job is you're getting all this fast money that you've never seen before in your life. and. It's very hard to get out of once you do because you're getting all this support. And yeah, it, now I, there's a really dark side about the massage parlor too, is some people are very, very brutal. And I think, I don't know if I would have left ever if I didn't get fired because I think in a way I was repeating the trauma over and over and over because I never admitted it to myself. I literally gaslighted myself into thinking it didn't happen because everyone has told me it didn't happen. And then I look throughout my life and there's, through Mark's videos even, there's signs that it was real the whole time. I heard some girl saying like, she had a hard time peeing and I have a hard time peeing in front of people and stuff. My best friend in high school could even attest to this. She used to turn on all the air dryers in the high school so that way I could she would sit with me for like 10, 15 minutes just so I could do it. Um, growing up, I used to ha I used to play with LPS. Every single story I ever played was of someone getting raped. And 
there's just so many more signs. The fact that I couldn't, I have a hard time being touched uh, unless I'm drunk, then immediately all clothes are coming off. And just a lot of things like that, that are all signs of sexual abuse, the porn addiction, the, uh, I heard some girls on here saying that she would literally reenact herself getting R word. And yeah, I've been there. And I think in a way the massage parlor was kind of me repeating that cycle without me even realizing what I was doing. And yeah, so leaving was the best thing that ever happened to me. And now, you know, in, in like to show, give you a matter of perspective, I was struggling to get an apartment for months because I had to pay for other things and I'm paying for classes to try to better my life. And working there for two weeks, I got an apartment. Like that's addictive. That's hard to give up. Uh, but now like, you know, taking a step back and really realizing it's so sad. I don't know how I'm coming across to you guys, but I wrote so much. I try, I literally wrote like an autobiography that kind of to walks you through and shows you the psychological Your progression. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I, then I got on here and I've talked about one like percent of it. And it's just, it's so infinitely deep and so infinitely complex. And that is why you just can't judge people. I mean, I'm not saying you should allow everyone into your life and you should be giving, giving, giving when you're drained as heck. Uh, but, you know, just accept people for who they are and where they're at. Uh, and, you know, now I don't have a job. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, lazy, pathetic, blah, blah, blah. But I see about like three people a couple times a month, just enough, just enough to pay my bills and get by because I, I've i been running my whole life and I just needed a second to breathe and go through and collect myself. And I know myself, I grow so quickly. The fact that I have am blessed enough to have a strong mind to figure this out, I think is a really good sign. And I know I'm always growing and stuff and working on the next thing. So my goal is to eventually just completely quit everything and I shouldn't be doing this because I know in LA everyone wants something from someone but you should follow my channel Bethany Batchy uh, I do a podcast and I'm gonna keep doing it because it's something I'm into and I stopped for a while because I was getting bullied on the internet from August the Duck they am the most narcissistic person on the TikTok which is fine it, what, it is, what fine. is what is your your thing again uh Bethany Batchy I think it's like B-A-C-H-I-E and then Bethany you should know how to spell Bethany Okay. And then I think that's that's it. That's it. That's all, right, all I wanted to say. Well, I just wanted so to clarify a little bit. <laughs>